Thank you for the introduction. So, good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about considerations and expectations for in vitro release testing of complex formulations. Here is the outline of my talk. First, I'm going to briefly discuss the role of IVRT for generic complex. Then, I will um, briefly you know, discuss the expectations in IVRT method development and validation for complex generic E evaluation. And last, I will summarize a few take home messages to highlight some key points. So, in general, IVRT is designed to, um, to, to measure the rate and extent of drug release from a drug product under a specific condition. When designed appropriately, the IVRT can be sensitive and discriminating to detect the physical chemical changes in a drug product. Therefore, it has been used as an important quality control tool to monitor the drug stability as well as the manufacturing process. In addition to being an important QC tool, IVRT has also been used as a valuable tool for comparative in vitro drug release between tests and reference for BE evaluation of complex generics. So although it's desired, your IVIT method is bio-relevant and is predictive of in vivo performance, in general, the recommended comparative IVIT is not expected to correlate or be predictive of in vivo bioavailability. So in the next couple of slides, I'm going to show you two example products specific guidances where comparative IVRT has been recommended for BE evaluation. The first example is um, on the uh, PSG for dexamethasone turbomycin ophthalmic ointment. So this guidance recommends two selective options, and the comparative IVRT is part of the in vitro only approach. The second example I'm going to talk about is for the resveratrol long-acting injectable microspheres. So in this guidance, the comparative IVRT is recommended in conjunction with the recommended in vivo PK study. Next, I'm going to move on to talk about some general um, I, uh, expectations for um, IVRT for generic complex. So what you should have submitted, in, uh, what should be submitted in your end application if IVRT is used for BE purpose. In brief, three reports. The first one, uh, method development report, then method validation report, last, your pivotal IVRT study report. So in your method um, development report, you should provide detailed description on the experimental parameters for your comparative IVRT, including drug dose amount, agitation, stirring rate, sampling time points, IVRT apparatus, dissolution media composition, volume, pH, temperature, drug solubility in your release media, as well as the membrane inlet if that's applicable. So you should also provide detailed information on how these parameters were optimized, including the rationale for their selection. So for the method validation, you sh we expect to see data on linearity and range of your analytical method, the accuracy, precision, reproducibility, sensitivity, discriminatory power, and robustness of your IVRT method, and also the solution solubility or stability. So in the next couple of slides, I'm going to elaborate a bit more on like how to demonstrate reproducibility sensitivity and discriminatory power of your IVRT method. So for reproducibility, I'm going to show you one example figure. So basically, to demonstrate your IVRT method is reproducible, you should provide us data to show the release profiles of the same formulation by your IVRT method of different experiments to show the release profiles are not significantly different for each experiment. Then for sensitivity, one way to demonstrate that is to show the release profiles of, uh, of uh, drug products with different uh, drug concentration, for instance, as shown here. 
in general, demonstration of reproducibility or sensitivity is fairly straightforward. And based on what have, we have seen, most of the time, firms have a good handle on that. However, it's not always the case for discriminatory ability demonstration. In fact, this is one of the most common major deficiencies we have identified during ENDA review for comparative IVIT. So you may wonder what kind of studies you could do to sufficiently demonstrate your method is discriminatory. So in general, this can be accomplished by comparing the release profiles of the test product and your reference product manufactured under the targeted conditions to the ones manufactured under intentionally meaningful variation. So here I'm showing you one figure. All those, so first of all, please note that there's no re reference product profile here. But just to show you the way to demonstrate the discriminatory ability, so all these four formulations, they are compositionally equivalent. But they were manufactured with uh, minor differences, such as the type of solvents we use or the homogenization techniques. So we expect to see this type of data to really see your IVRT method would be able to detect the differences in manufacturing or formulation parameters. So when you, oh sorry, when you design you know, your test formulation for the purpose of discriminatory ability, although it's not required, we still highly encourage those test products to meet the basic drug product requirement, such as uh, drug loading and the Q1, Q2 thinness for parental products. So take home messages. First, although, like I said, the IVRT uh, for um, DE evaluation is not expected to be biorelevant, it has to be able to distinguish the batches that are not bioequivalent. So just to emphasize again, to, you really need to show sufficient data to demonstrate your IVRT method be able to do that. So to, you, should, you should conduct uh, you know, the IVRT with the drug product manufactured under your targeted condition and compare that to the ones uh, that were intentionally manufactured with meaningful variation. So another example potentially is for suspension drug products. You could compare the release profiles of your test product to a batch where you manufactured with a particle size out of your specification. Then for the release profile in general, they should, uh, they should be complete uh, or reach a plateau, achieve at least 85% uh, percent release. However, in certain cases, you know, the, the complete release may not be relevant or hard to achieve. In that case, you need to provide sufficient justification. So as long as your justification is scientifically acceptable and adequate, an incomplete release profile could still be acceptable. And last, I guess I just try to emphasize, just to see you really need to, you know, to show your IVRT is discriminatory, uh, be able to detect uh, the variation in your formulation and process. That's it. Thank you.